Is immigration attorney Heather Poole anyway? Here's an up close and personal interview with her. Meet the woman behind the lawyer. How did you become an immigration attorney? I went to law school because I wanted to be a civil rights attorney. I was a student protester in college and felt that I needed to be within the law to change it. I knew being from the outside looking in was never really going to make positive effect on a large scale. So I went to school thinking I could change the world. And I fell into immigration law because it was the last class of my semester, of my last year in law school. And the thing that rang true for me with immigration law is that immigrants have the least amount of protection under the U.S. Constitution of any disadvantaged class of people. So this is exactly what I wanted to do. So my first job out of law school was working for a private immigration firm where I learned all about immigration law, did cases ranging from employment visas to family immigration cases to abuse spouses. You look young. How much experience do you have? I've been doing this for over 12 years on a full-time basis, only immigration law and only complicated immigration cases. I have a 98% overall approval rate and I take 40 to 50 cases a year. Really? Tell me more. Oh, well, I also teach immigration law to uh, the paralegal program at Fullerton College, which I've been doing for the last four years. I'm also a member uh, of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. In addition, I've also been asked um, and have spoken at uh, multiple conferences on behalf of the American Immigration Lawyers Association. I regularly train other lawyers for various bar associations on complicated family immigration issues, including abuse spouses, unlawful presence waivers, and conditional green card waivers. You do a lot. Is there anything else? I've also been named five times a super lawyer, rising star in Los Angeles Magazine and Law and Politics Magazine. I've received commendations from the National Domestic Violence Hotline for my work on behalf of immigrants and my articles have been published in various bar association uh, magazines, including Los Angeles Lawyer and Orange County Lawyer. The Pasadena Star News has also covered me, as well as other newspapers across the country, on my various immigration topics. Do you come recommended? If you just do an internet search, you're going to find that I'm known for complicated family immigration issues. I'm recommended by visajourney.com and immigrate2us.com, two major internet forums for people who are trying to understand the immigration process. I'm also recommended as a referring private attorney to various nonprofits in Los Angeles, including, including the Los Angeles Legal Aid Society. Why do you only take complicated family-based cases? I find them interesting, quite honestly. Um, people who are either separated from their spouse and are trying to get back together uh, but are separated because of difficult immigration situation or a bar due to unlawful presence or misrepresentation, they are in trouble and they need someone who's actually going to understand what the arguments need to be and is going to understand what it's going to take to get there. Now I also like to help people who have separated from their spouse and feel helpless and don't know what to do. So another large part of my business is to help abused immigrants get their green cards without the consent or knowledge of their spouses. How is this different from other immigration attorneys? I find that there are other immigration attorneys who can do basic immigration cases uh, where there's compliance with both spouses and both spouses have no past visa fraud, no complicated issues. But if you want someone who has seen the craziest cases, come to me. What sets you apart from other immigration attorneys? I know that a lot of immigration attorneys have hearts of gold. They wouldn't be in this otherwise. Um, there are some immigration attorneys who do nothing but certain types of uh, employment cases and they never see a client. All they deal with are with corporations or with general counsel and they prefer it that way. They don't like client interaction. Client interaction is one of the favorite parts of my job. I get to meet with people all the time. I talk to them on the phone. I talk to their witnesses, to their family members. I mean, everyone's saying, Heather, thank you so much for doing this for my son, for my daughter, you know, and all this hard work. Is this going to help? You know, I'm constantly talking to everyone, and I understand what's on the line for them. 
and I feel personally invested that this, this works. And, you know, in the small amount of time when we have to appeal a case or I have to go down and argue with immigration, you know, I get mad, but I, I keep my focus where my clients can get upset um, and frustrated with the process. It's my job to keep sane and to keep calm and make it happen. We just have to stick through some of the fire to get what we want. And, you know, 98, 99% of the time, we get what we want. What are your favorite parts of the job? Hmm. The variety is a big part, uh, and knowing that I'm keeping people who love each other together. That is the best part of my job, by far. Um, I still get Christmas cards from the very first clients I represented 12 years ago. Uh, they're very thankful. Once they get their green card, they never forget you. And that's a wonderful feeling, to feeling that you are affecting not only one person, but the ability for them to bring their family, to stay here with their children. It's a wonderful feeling. What are the hardest parts of the job? Uh, the long hours, um, the difficulty working with arbitrary CIS decisions and decisions from ICE Council and the cooperation of other government agencies or lack of. We try all the time to um, work with really horrible RFEs that are boilerplate that really don't look into the client's history, into their case, and we really have to set our clients apart from other people that they see because there's so much fraud in immigration law that unfortunately immigration officers are very skeptical about most of anyone's clients. So we really have to go in from that vantage point and document the case very well. So that takes a lot of extra work and explain to clients who expect a certain outcome at a certain time, sometimes these complications, what happens with processing times, how the officers react in interviews, these are things that are unexpected and we can't control. So as an attorney, we always want to control the outcome and how the process works as much as possible. So that's the most frustrating part, but it's our job to make sure we're with our clients all the way through it and make sure we can represent them the best possible way. Why are you so successful with so many difficult cases? Well, my clients know from the get-go that I'm going to require that they do a lot of work. A lot of attorneys um, just file forms and do a casual filing just to get the filing in. I believe you have to put your best foot forward from the beginning, your strongest arguments. Because if you're constantly on the defensive, you're never going to have a strong case. And it's also possible that when you submit your case in different pieces and different strength levels, that they're never going to be able to put it all together and see how strong your client's case is. So not only do the clients have to do a lot of work, but I also do a lot of background research. And in all my consultations, I ask even the uncomfortable questions to make sure that this person really has a chance. I'm very honest with you, and I'm not going to take your case unless I think that you've got a really good chance at this. But don't fool yourself. I'm going to make you do a lot of homework to make it happen. As a kid, did you think you'd grow up to be a lawyer? What makes you especially insightful? <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to be an FBI agent, actually, but I could never really learn the, uh, the language skill well. So, um, but no, I've always been a, a big fan of uh, mystery writers, and I grew up on um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who is the, the author of the famous Sherlock Holmes mysteries, and and I always loved, you know, finding unique ways um, to tell a story, um, getting to the heart of the matter, f finding things out um, about things that are just not apparent to the average person. And really that's why clients come to me, because they've, some of them have talked to other lawyers who've spent 10, 20 minutes talking about their background, but it's nothing in comparison to what we put our clients through, and especially in our waiver cases, because we have to make the cases so unique compared to um, another spouse and, um, and their immigrant spouse be in the same situation. We have to make their set of facts completely different. So we go into their back, we go into their finances, their family history, and sometimes I have clients who are breaking down to me on the phone and we understand some, sometimes these are very personal conversations and everything is confidential when someone talks to me, but it's only by asking those really in-depth questions, those, those history questions, when we go back to childhood, that really sets their case apart and makes it easier for them to get an approval and it makes their approval that much faster. How do you keep the stress and pressure from getting to you? 
Uh, I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie. I like to ski, scuba dive, snowboard, jump out of planes. Uh, I just love sports, and that's how I get out the physical stress. Uh, the emotional stress, I love to travel, um, I love thriller novels, and uh, I go to cheesy horror movies with my good friend once a month um, just to get some stress out and get my mind off of immigration. And I'm secretly a, a Star Trek fan. Lawyers are intimidating and expensive. How can I afford to hire you? Well, there's two things to talk about there. Um, I'm not the proverbial pond scum, the butt of all the lawyer jokes. I've heard those ever since I became a lawyer. I guess I'm the, um, the good person, the, the good guy. Uh, I went into law to help people, not to uh, make money off of people. Uh, with that being said, though, it, you know, to get the kind of quality work that you need in some of these cases, yeah, it's going to be more expensive uh, to go to a lawyer who knows what they're doing because they know about how much time it takes uh, to pull off a certain case. But we make the finances be the very last thing that our clients are concerned about. Um, we offer a variety of ways to pay our fees. Although we don't negotiate on fees because I know exactly how much time it takes, we uh, give incentives for payment within a week after um, they first talk to us in the free consultation. We also give incentives um, on a sliding scale uh, depending on how quickly they retain after uh, the consultation. But in addition, we also give incentives for various types of payments, whether it's cash and check versus uh, credit cards. So if we, they want to save the fees instead of us being charged fees for credit cards, that's fine with me. But we also offer payment plans because we know some of our uh, cases can be more expensive. And I've even had some of my clients say, well, I'd rather get the miles on my credit card, so let me pay them on a monthly basis or let me give you the down payment on that and then... Um, we'll pay in cash and the rest, and whatever economic situation you're in, we're not going to judge you. Um, but what we usually require if you do a payment plan is um, you pay half up front. And we do uh, accept credit cards for payments in, in tougher times, or if you do want to earn those magical miles. So we try to make it uh, economically feasible to work with us and to work with the best. Is it important to get to know your clients? Yeah, they, they feel like members of the family. Everyone in our office um, is referred to on a first name basis. Uh, so we learn so much about their personal history and, and their personal lives. It's only fair that we have that kind of relationship because we're going to be asking for all these, these personal private details and they're putting their life in our hands. And it's hard not to get connected to these people, but um, I am very happy when we get an approval, of course, but I'm also there partly as counselor. I find myself a lot of the times calming uh, clients down and, and giving them resources so they can get through the stressful times with immigration. Um, but it's, we know they have a lot on the line, and um, it's important that they feel that they are supported, and we're very easy to access, and um, we can answer questions throughout the process. So it's not just a one time meet Heather, sign up the case, and never see her again until the end. You have contact with me throughout the entire case. Can't help it. What are some ways you stay in touch with clients? We're lucky with modern technology that even when I'm, I'm traveling to be with a client, um, in, let's say in Minnesota for a green card case, if a client has an emergency in Orange County, California, I can get on the phone, I can get through email, I can, I can do a lot to to stop the situation from getting worse and even get on the phone with an ICE agent if I have to. So it's, these are great modern times. What's it like when you win a case for a client? Oh, it's indescribable. It's a great feeling because you know that you've changed someone's life. You know, and you, you get so personally invested in these cases, winning because you know all this history from both sides and what's on the line for these people. and. You know, I still get calls and, and emails, you know, six months, a year, five years later, you know, thanking me again and, you know, sending me cards and you know, telling me about how great their life is. That, that is the absolute compliment to me. Besides referring, you know, their friends and family to me for more work, they keep me updated as to what's going on in their lives. I love seeing the, the family photos of everyone together when everyone couldn't be together before. So it makes me feel like I was put on this earth to do this. How do your clients express their appreciation? 
uh, thank you cards, um, a lot of emails telling me about what how their life has changed, um, telling me about the newborn that they have now that they've been able to reunite with their spouse. We've been separated for years. Um, very touching. I, I got a picture last year from uh, one of my clients who had not seen his mother for 10 years because of immigration problems. And he was finally able to go back home with his green card and they had a big banner for him at the airport and his mother was crying in the photo. She was so happy to see him and that makes it all worth it. And sometimes my clients uh, really show their appreciation by giving me some sort of collectible from Wonder Woman because they find out when I go to my office they see all these Wonder Woman uh, items because I grew up on Diana Prince and that's my personality. Want to know more about Attorney Heather? Join us on Facebook and LinkedIn or visit our website, humanrightsattorney.com, for the latest info, news, videos, podcasts, and much more. I am an expert in complex family-based immigration cases and have a 98% approval rate for the past 12 years. I am a nationally published immigration author and frequent public speaker on immigration topics. I regularly train other immigration lawyers on complicated marriage and family immigration cases for the American Immigration Lawyers Association, Federal Bar Association, and national legal education providers. I represent clients all over the U.S. traveling to immigration interviews and deportation proceedings. Visit our website, humanrightsattorney.com, for more in-depth information and articles on complex family immigration issues.